Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at yet another wonderful mod, this time in the form of Research Bodies, which is being made by forum user Simon56Modder, and what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is an interesting new function that now requires you to actually discover other celestial bodies before you can explore them. Now to more easily explain how this works and what it does, let's actually head into the tracking station where you'll notice we of course know Kerbin because well it's our own freaking planet. And we know about the moon because well it's the big giant rock in the sky, who could miss it? But if we zoom out further, that little unknown object there is Minmus. If we zoom out even further, you'll notice that uh, we don't actually know what the other planets are or where they are. We know that there is something there, but we have no clue what any of these different celestial bodies are or their moons, etc. So we actually have to go and discover them to make them known to us. And that that really makes me happy. I've always thought that career mode for Kerbal Space Program could use a feature like this, Maybe not for all the planets, perhaps just for like the really far out ones or their moons, something like that. But I think this is a really cool start to that. And I, I just love the idea of having to actually find the planets first before you can actually go to them. Now, so how do we actually figure out where these other planets are. Now there's two methods of doing it. The first one is how you'll really start the game and that is by using this button right here. Now you'll notice when I click it, it tells us that our tracking station has to be at level two or three. Now this is configurable as it says on the screen there uh, through a config file that comes with this mod, uh, which within that you can change pretty much all of the different features of this mod so it's a really nice little config but by default you have to have a tracking station of at least level two so let's upgrade our tracking station to level two and now if we click that we get this little research bodies ui which is pretty simple and honestly i personally don't care much for this one but this is how you kind of start the mod and how you discover new planets is you click this button. And when you click it, it will spend both funds and research points. And uh, the rate of which is at 20 funds and 10 research points to start. But here's the thing. The more bodies that you find within the solar system, the longer the process will take and the more you'll have to spend money and science wise so let's get the th this whole thing started off so we'll spend 20 funds and 10 science to find nothing sorry there is nothing to see here all right well let's click again uh nothing now here's the thing this is why i don't like this beginning thing you just you're just sitting here clicking this button nope space only unfortunately until you actually find something this this is what you're limited to oh there we go jeb will be happy a new world named minmus has just been found orbiting around kerbin so close you won't need snacks anymore if you're going there so very good we have discovered our first celestial body. Now, if we go back to the tracking station, you'll see that, uh, oh god, no, yeah, we're zoomed all the way out, aren't we? Zoom in, there we go, we now have Minmus. We actually know about it now, and we can see the information on it. It's glorious, which I actually didn't show off at this point. Uh, you don't even have the information on the other celestial bodies un until you actually do discover them. So you'll see it's still just classified as an unknown object, untracked here, uh, which is quite cool. I do like that it even blocks out the information. And yeah, so now we have discovered Minmus, and that's the first step in discovering other celestial bodies. Now, like I said, though, you just kind of keep clicking this button until you find more. Again, nope, space only. Let's try again. Sorry, there's nothing to see here. Let's at least find one more before I talk about phase two of this mod. Uh, nothing. Mm, okay, give it a second. Oops, no, nope, there's no, nothing, anything new here. Oh, lovely. Result void. Oh, I haven't seen that one before. Nice, nice, nice. 
Oh, there we go. For a long time, maybe for thousands of years, we saw a red dot in the sky. A star? Snacks? We weren't able to tell. Unfortunately, we are sure it's not snacks. It's tuna. I do like these little bits of flavor text that they add in for the discovery. It's not just, hey, you found tuna. It's actually a funny little, very Kerbal paragraph. I do enjoy that. Uh, but yes, now we have discovered Duna. So again, if we head to the tracking station and zoom all the way the crap out, we now have Duna over here with its orbit and everything. And that, that just makes me happy. Uh, again, though, the process of discovering celestial bodies by just Clicking this button over and over and over is quite boring, but that's not the only way to find stuff in this mod. And this, this is where I really love this mod. It adds into the game a telescope, which if we go to the R&D facility, if you follow the tree down to advanced exploration, you will see that we now have a new telescope called the TB75M telescope, which if you put into space, you can use to discover planets. And I, again, just love that. This, this is where I think this mod really shines. Sure, the button works on the main screen, but this is where you actually get hands-on with actually having to go and discover things out in your solar system. So let's go and take a look at it in the VAB so you can see a bigger image of it and how cool it does look. Let's just grab the command pod there and uh, head down to science which is where you'll find it of course and you'll see we have the TB75M telescope which does have a rea reaction wheel and a 150 electrical charge and if we rotate it to fit on there bam there we go it's essentially just two cylinders a small cylinder and then a slightly larger cylinder uh, but with of course a hollow telescope in the middle I do like the texturing on it uh, the model isn't the greatest, but I mean, it works. It's perf perfectly functional for what it is. Uh, the texturing is pretty cool, though. I do like the uh, the naming on it and everything and the paneling. Very, very cool indeed. And how you use this is, of course, you have to get it up into space. And so let's actually go and take a look at one of these telescopes that I put up earlier for demonstration purposes. So back to the tracking station. And to our very, very creatively named telescope and go to fly this mission where we have it sitting in a comfortable 200,000 meter orbit, which is useless. You'll see that if we right click on this to try and track any celestial bodies, we can't. This has to be up above 250 meters for it to actually be functional. So that is the first thing I wanted to point out right off the bat. You have to have it at a much higher orbit than maybe you might otherwise do. So of course, let's use hyper edit to put it up into, oh boy, why did I hit that? There we go. Excellent. Now we're out at 300,000. Gotta love hyper edit. And we can now track celestial bodies. Now we get to that same little track bodies UI with the button here, but it's a lot different now. I mean, it's still the same button, and if you click it, we... J oh my god, we actually just discovered Drace. Well, that... <laughs> you actually have no idea how fortuitous that was. Here's the thing, which I was about to explain after it told me, oh, you found nothing. You have to be pointing at the object you want to find and you have to be within 12 degrees of precision to find it. So that was just stupid blind luck that we just discovered Trace. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's kind of amusing, actually. I like that. So, yes, not only do you have to be above 250,000 meters, you have to be pointing at the object you want to find, and also you have to be within 75 million kilometers. That is the range of this telescope. Now, what I was going to do to show this off is open up the map and show you how the easiest way to essentially track stuff is. Which, <laughs> we, we already found that one by pure dumb luck. I am simply flabbergasted that we were able to do that in just one shot. Now, what I've been doing when I've been playing around with this is going into the map mode and targeting 
one of the planets, which is an unknown object. Because then, of course, we get on our nav ball the useful little uh, indicator here, which, hold on, let's go back. So that little purple indicator is, of course, our target. And if we just lock our SAS and track, oh, nothing to see here. So again, it's not guaranteed that you'll always find something. There we go. Our instruments are so powerful that we were able to see a purple dot in the sky. Bob named it Eve first. We thought it was an ice cream like Minmus, but then the scientist at R&D said it's impossible that close to the sun. Ah, there we go. So it's, it's still not really that much of a challenge to actually find other celestial bodies because we do have this targeting feature. We can just point it up, uh, get this satellite up here, go to the map, target an object, get your nav ball to the right point, and then start tracking things. But still, you have to find everything. So, like, you have to find not just the planets, but also its moons, etc. So it gets quite interesting. Now, one ex extra little fun thing with this, you don't just need the TB75M telescope. If you have the official Asteroid Day mod, then the Sentinel Telescope will also work to do this same function, but with limitations. It can only see at a radius of 45 million kilometers rather than the 75 million kilometers that this telescope can. And it's slightly harder to actually find celestial bodies with that telescope, so you may have to click this button a few more times to get it to actually track. Uh, but, of course, it is cheaper. That's the thing about these telescopes. Uh, they are very expensive. Let's uh, actually head back down into the Space Center, because I did forget to point out exactly how expensive that they are. As it's... It's a little bit interesting. It's your sort of toss-up. Do you want to sit here clicking all day, spending both science points and funds? Or do you just want to spend a crap load of funds to get a telescope out into space, which doesn't cost science to find things, but just takes time on your part to aim things? So if we actually go to my telescope save file here, uh, this ship cost... Oh my god. Uh, actually, not as much money as I thought. 9510 uh, of course, again, this is all configurable within the mod, so you can make it more expensive if you like. But yeah, the telescope alone cost 5,000 funds. So if you want to spend a little bit more money to find things in a bit a bit easier, but a little maybe a little bit more time-consuming, the telescope's the way to go. And personally, the telescope is what I like. Now, a few things for planned features. This is the mod as it is in this current state. They are hoping to add additional things like obs observatories on the ground, uh, bodies look blurred if they're not tracked, uh, different uh, configuration options, and the ability to do the configuration in-game, all sorts of fun stuff like that, and I cannot wait to see how that does progress in the future. I really do love the idea of having to discover celestial bodies before you can actually go to them, which... I mean, it isn't to say that you couldn't still go there. The planets do, of course, still exist out in the solar system. It's just technically to you, they're unknown. And you just have to find them to eventually discover them. Uh, but yeah, that is the Research Bodies mod, uh, once again made by Simon56Modder. And if you would like to try this out for yourself, you can check out the link in the description, and I would definitely say to give it a go, especially if you like playing on career mode. It is quite a fun little mod. I've really enjoyed my time with it so far, especially with this telescope. It just... It makes it, in my mind, a more realistic game because, you know, you gotta actually know where the things are first and actually discover them for science and it's wonderful. So yes, I hope you have enjoyed this video today and of course that you come back for the next. But until then, thank you for watching my friends and as always, have a good one. And I just realized I forgot to extend one of these solar panels. Oh well, have a good one folks.